Good morning you guys, it's Karen and I thought I would bring you along whilst I do a groom on a schnoodle. So Bramble is a miniature schnauzer crossed with a miniature poodle and so a very um, individual coat but all doodle, doodle coats are kind of tricky. They grow in all different ways, um, they can become very easily matted and can sometimes be difficult to groom and Bramble today in this video you'll see is very matted particularly her ears were very very bad there were tight mats against her ear and then her tail was extremely bad again most of her tail was matted with a few hairs around it now that's something that sometimes you won't even notice the only way that you would notice that is if you're brushing every few days and using a slicker brush um, or a comb and going right to the base because the tail on first look, when I first saw Bramble, she didn't look matted at all. I had a feel over her as I always do um, with dogs before grooming and it, nothing felt matted. It's not until you actually get very, very close up and start to brush that you're like, oh, this is matted. Um, there's a difference between mats and tangles. Mats are where it's against the skin and has tightened against the skin and that can be very uncomfortable for them as they're walking. Thankfully, her legs were not matted, her body was not matted, it was just her ears and tail. Um, so hopefully she wasn't too uncomfortable. Tangles are just where there's a little knot halfway down the hair and you can normally get that out no problem with a comb. Or you can snip it out and it doesn't make an awful lot of difference. With matting, had Bramble been matted all over, she probably would have needed to be shaved because it would just be too much to get all of those mats out. Because it was her ears and her tail, I was able to use some products that I'm going to show you here, um, spray them on, rub them in, and gently use my comb to tease some of it out and also cut into the mat. Um, because otherwise, the alternative is to shave the ears and shave the tail, and that would have looked very odd in the overall groom. Um, I think it's worth you knowing if you are grooming your own dog or sending them to a groomer that the groomer if there are mats against the skin the groomer is only left with two options one is to shave the mats out and two is to comb it out which will be painful for the dog um, you know Bramble did not enjoy her ears being dematted and she didn't enjoy her tail being dematted don't get me wrong she wasn't crying or anything she was just sort of if they look over their shoulder at you or you know she was occasionally trying to bite the comb and things like that that's her saying this is uncomfortable for me it's like when you know when you're young and your mum's trying to comb out the tangles in your hair it's like that but it can go on for a long long time it takes a long long time and most of the time certainly commercial groomers won't have the time to comb out the mats and also me personally I don't want to put dogs through that you know I think it's it is much kinder to shave them and if a dog is matted all over that's the only solution left um, so it was just to let you know that you're you know if you have a dog that doesn't enjoy grooming which I think Bramble was absolutely fine with grooming. She was an absolute angel, as you'll see throughout the video. She was very, very well behaved, and it was only when there was tangles and mats that she wasn't enjoying it. Um, but if your dog doesn't like grooming, just have a think, are they tangly at all? Do you brush them regularly? Because if you brush them regularly, there'll be less tangles. If you use some products like this, then it will be much easier to get the tangles out, and the whole brushing and grooming experience will become much more pleasant for them, and there'll be nothing about it to, to not like. This is the Wow Detangler. It's just a spray it's a leave-in conditioner you can spray this on after they've been in the bath or you can use this on dry hair to help you get out any tangles um, and this is this is called pet silk liquid silk but I don't think this is available anymore so I'll try to find something similar it may well be for human hair it's just a serum that you can put in the coat again you can either put it in when it's dry to help you comb through it because it makes it very slippy um, or you can use it after the bath just to make sure that the coat is easy to comb and brush going forward. Something else I'd recommend is regular baths. If you bath a dog once a week, there is this um, belief that you're going to do something to their coat, that you're going to take out their natural oils, and that isn't the case. That As long as you are reconditioning their coat um, and you're not using a stripping shampoo, so if you're using the shampoo that I showed you or a pet shampoo, it's highly likely it'll be at the right pH, you won't strip the coat. As long as you rinse out every bit of shampoo and like I said, recondition it, um, then there will be no problem with the coat. My Watson has had to have an allergy bath once a week at least, sometimes more, for his five years of life and 
his coat is still beautifully shiny and soft so there's absolutely no issue there but what you will do by washing them once a week is remove any dirt and that will make it much easier to comb and much less likely to mat because the mat is not just from not brushing it's from the build-up of dirt I'll link these pro products in the description for you um, and I will stop yammering on and let you see the video um, there is there's some parts missing because I didn't want to you know there was parts where I wanted to concentrate on trying to get the mats out of her tail as gently as possible rather than filming um, so there's not an awful lot about the tail and a few other bits missing but you've got most of the groom in this video so it's a pretty long one so I hope you enjoy what a good girl was that I'm just letting Bramble get used to the table for a minute I'm going to put this on for a minute she's discovered the liver paste on here there's only little bits there we go good girl let's see what you think of this Good girl, so she's not scared. What do you want to see what it is? That's okay, isn't it? So I'm using a half inch blade today. So this one is a three and three quarter FS from Andis. So I'm actually going to run through with the clippers first on, on Bramble. And it means there'll be less drying time. And that'd be nice for Bramble. What do you think? So I need to be doing it from her head down. So we start at the top here. You look like you had been touched, Ellen. Let's see. Mm. That might be a little mat in there. Let's have a little comb through, shall we? And we'll see what you think of these treats. What do you think about these ones? What do you think about these? You like that one? Good girl. Oh, you're like Watson, you spat it out. <laughs> so I'm just going to brush this bit here so I can get the clip us through. Good girl. Good girl. Work girl. Clever girl. You're a clever girl. You can't get the clippers through when it's, oh you're eating it. When it's so, and there's a little, any kind of little mat in. your coat a little calm shall we it's not matty it's just a little bit tangly because it's been raining and whatnot Watson's coat gets like that this is a good girl good girl and if it's too much we will wash it first yes we'll wash it first so when you're combing just hold your fingers at the bottom of the hair and then use the comb at the top bit so that you're not pulling on their skin. You can also use the comb sideways to take out tangles, like so. And then it's gentler on them and doesn't hurt them. Good girl. What a good girl. What a good girl. What a good girl. Clever girl. Be so quiet. So this is not going very easily through Miss Bramble's coat. So what I'm going to do instead is give her a little wash and a blow dry and then we'll do the, the clipping afterwards. How's that sound? Sound okay? So here I'm just putting on some liver pate onto this sticky licky mat so I can actually stick this to the bath and it's something that keeps them occupied and you know makes them feel a bit happier.
it looks like I'm giving her a bum massage here. I'm actually just getting off some dried poop, that's all. Um, if you, even with shampoo, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get on, so you have to get down and dirty and get your fingers in there. The water, I would say, is cool to lukewarm. Obviously, you don't want it freezing cold because that would just give them a shock, but you need to remember that you don't certainly don't want it hot like you would have a bath, and you want it a bit cooler than you would like it because dog skin is a lot more sensitive than ours is. Um, and actually, I know somebody's dog that hated baths until they got the temperature right, and then she loved baths, you know. Um, so just be careful with that. And when you're rinsing, you can see that I'm using my hands and lifting up each side of the feet just to make sure you've got every bit of shampoo out because otherwise it can irritate their skin. So make sure you use your hands when rinsing. What you'll see I'm doing here is diluting the conditioner that I'm using so I've got a little bit in the bottom of a separate bottle and I'm just adding a little bit more in and then I will fill it up with water. Hot water is best if you're preparing a lot earlier than the actual groom and then just shake it. Um, so obviously check again check the temperature of it before you use it but um, you really do need to dilute conditioners. <music> I find um, most of the drying easiest to do when they're on the floor and I've got my liver paste there as you can see and that will help me to direct the dog in the direction I need them to go depending on what bit I want to get dry. Bramble's actually shaken out the cotton wool from her ears towards the end of the bath so when that happens just make sure that you can see the cotton wool because I took the cotton wool um, ball and split it in half and so just make sure you can see it all just in case it's gone down there it's very unlikely because you put a big enough piece that it wouldn't but just make sure you can see it. Next I'll put a robe on her and this just helps with the drying process because as you'll see a typical doodle she does a lot of crazy running around and rubbing up against things and it really helps get a lot of the water out of the coat. So it's time, time for a bit of a dry, a blow dry. I don't know how she'll be, we shall see, because I do have a happy hoodie if she is bothered by it. Let's get it up here and we'll give it a little comb. So I'm just gonna give her a little comb through. Good girl, good girl. Oh, particularly that tail is gonna need some work, isn't it? When you're doing things like this, where you're blow drying them, it's good to have a feel for lumps and things, just to check everything's okay. Always make sure you've got your hand here so you can feel the heat, you know, in case it gets too hot. Now, she's actually got quite a few mats, I can see. So what I'm going to do is sit and brush her in the living room. I'm going to sit her on my lap or next to me um, so that she's not on the table for too long. Let me show you this mat so that you can see what they look like. Can you see it there? So that will be quite difficult to brush out, like it would be quite painful for her. So I'm gonna actually cut into that. Yeah, there's a mat on this side the same. Like I said, it's probably from the roly polies. Probably from those roly polies, isn't it? Probably from those roly polies, yes. Just see how much I can get out before having to cut into them. Good girl, what a good girl. That's so brave. You're such a brave girl. 
Now this one, because this one's halfway down the hair, I'm just going to cut this one out because it's quite tight. So we're just going to cut that one out and we will blend it in. It will still leave some hair, so that's good. We can just take that one out. We can just take that one right out, can't we? Put those scissors behind me so little mist doesn't get anywhere near them. Clipping down. Yeah, just for this. Try to put some more of this on the bars. going to start at her neck and sort of hold her skin a little bit and just go in one line all the way back and that'll take me as far as I can go on that. Good girl. And then just go on the line next to that. Get a little bit closer. And just as she's enjoying her liver paste, we're going to just go over. There's a few mats still to come out. I just wanted to give her a break from, from being brushed. So I'm doing a bit of flickering. So we'll go down to the knee, about to the knee. Might get my little seat out. Treats. Got some treats in my pocket so I can give you some treats. What do you think about that? Treats are good not only to make the whole experience a bit better. No, you don't like that one. You don't like the duck ones. You only like the chicken ones. There we go. But also to position them where you need them to be. So, just going to go back here. holding her chin up there and she's been ever so good in letting me do that just to get the front of her here. What a good girl. You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Is it on this side? Good girl. Good girl. On this side always lift the ear up so that you can get the base of the ear. You might need to put her in the harness if she won't. Oh there's a good girl. I was gonna say she wouldn't let me do it but she is. What a good girl. Let's do this side. So just hold the ear up and do from the base of the ear. Get on the side of the neck there. That will make your ears nice and cool. Won't it? Make your ears nice and cool. Hair off the table. hair is so fine it's almost like I'm not going over it at all and because doodles coats go different grow different ways it doesn't matter that I'm you know going down and back and different ways because the, the hair grows in different ways anyway so as you can see I'm just kind of going with whatever way she's standing I'm gonna hold her for a minute Let's see if we can get pretty much get this side done good girl good girl You're such a good girl, aren't you? Mm. 
I'm not going to go too far underneath because I want to check where our nipples are before doing that, don't we? Just getting every bit I can up to about her knees. Good bit good, good, good girl, you're getting sleepy, aren't you? You're getting a bit sleepy. That's a good girl. No, I need to do that tushy. Should we get you turned this way? Right, there we go. Good girl. I'm just putting my hand underneath her tummy and that seems to help her stay still. I don't like using the harnesses if I can at all help it. Unless it's making it, you know, a bit stressful for the dog. Like if they just won't let you do their tail and they keep sitting down and it's easier actually to, to put them in, in the harness. Good girl, good girl. There we go. Then what we do is just grab our two little paws here. Oops, sit, good girl. And then, well, we can do it with a standing because she's quite agile. Let's have a look, let's have a look. And just have a look and see where are those nipples where are those nipples I can feel one back here I can't feel any at the top I can't feel any no I can't hold the two together good girl good girl and then I'm just going to lightly run this down because I can't see those little nipples never girl bramble good girl Oh, aren't you a clever girl? You showed me how. So let's have a look. Let's lift this up. And then your knee. That's a good girl. It's a good girl. Let's just make sure there's no nipples here. There's your nipples there. Just got one right, right there. So I just want to make sure I don't hurt that one. So I'm just going to go like that. Good girl. We do need to get a little bit of this fluff off, don't we? So we could use the clippers for that. So I'm just going to hold our ears together and take off a little bit of this bit here. Just a little bit. Good girl. There we go. There's a good girl. Okay, let's get into those ears now. with the ears I'm just going to brush through them and then hold them up and I'm going to start trimming from this end and make sure I hold the ear leather I really could do that over the other way couldn't we but we'll see the other ear so hold it up like that we want to shake there you go oh I know I know it's difficult isn't it the ear of the leather is there. I'm just going to cut across because I'm not sure what shape I want yet. Just want to get some lengths off and see what sort of shape is going to suit her. Let's have a look. I think that will be a nice one, a nice straight shape. Good girl. And then I'm going to tidy up this outside part of the ear. So here. All right. Again, holding, making sure I'm nowhere near the ear leather. Can actually cut it quite short here. Good girl. What a good girl. This bit's not quite so bad, is it? It's not quite so bad. Now she's quite alert, so I'm aware that with these sharp scissors, you need to be aware that she could move any minute, and that's obviously not what you want. Now, for the bit on the ear, I'm actually going to use my thinners. They just seem to work much better to give it a little bit of a layered look. Pull it out like this and I just drop into it a little bit. Got a little bit of curly bit there, haven't you? Like Al Watson. I know you're listening to that doggy, aren't you? <coughs> See, no matter what I do, it always makes me jump. Mm. Mm. Oh, mm. no. I'm just 
lifting the hair up and then cutting it into, into it. But this, you can't do that with it laying flat. You need to actually pull it away so that it doesn't look too uneven. So this is one ear here, the ear that's done, and then this ear that's long. Still got to do this one, haven't we? Good girl, well, good girl. So when you're checking your ears, a good way to do it is to hold them both up, like so, and then look from the front. So put it around like that. Good girl. <laughs> that way. Good girl. So you hold them like that. You can sort of see the shape you've gone for. Good girl. You can also pull them in the middle and make sure you've got about the same length. For a fringe, I'm just going to run it forward, brush it all forward, and then trim as much as I can around the eyes. So just do a little bit on your face before we give you a break. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good girl. Look at those lashes. Look at those lashes. This muzzle, hopefully this muzzle isn't matted. Oh, it is a bit, isn't it? But not too bad. Oh, God. Just gonna have to cut that out. That'd be way too painful to try and get out. Good girl. Good girl. That's a good girl. It's a clever girl. Good girl. I can't just shave you. I could, but there'll be nothing left of you. And gentle, there we go. Good girl. What a good girl. Oh, what a clever girl. So, for the muzzle, what I'm trying to do is comb it all forward because the owner wants her muzzle quite short. I know, so she's trying to she's trying to bite the brush because she's like, That's hurting. That's hurting me. There we go. I know, I know. So, we bring it all forward and then I'm just going to go up the side with the thinning shears see this so you can see here where I've brushed it all forward I'm going to keep that whisker out because they much prefer it if you keep their whiskers good girl that's a good girl good girl there's a lot of matting in there as well isn't there let's see what we can do let's see if we can take that out just going to clip that mat You can get away with clipping a few bits out and it not looking too odd. Can't you? Good girl. What a clever girl. What a clever girl. I know. She's like, all right, that's starting to hurt me. Yeah, just... Again with the thinners. Good girl. Good girl. And lay it back and see how, how things are doing. What a good girl. What a good girl, what a good girl. And I'm just gonna hold underneath here, it doesn't hurt her. It's just so that I can cut the hair and not worry about her moving. Good girl, good girl. You've got a curly muscle, haven't you? You've got 
curly moustache. A little curly moustache, is she here? So what I'm doing is holding the hair and then pulling against my own fingers at the end of the comb. Yes, I can see that. I can see those mats. There we go, good girl. Good girl. Now, with the clippers at the bum, this is what I normally do with the tail. You tuck the tail under and you just clip off whatever's at the end there, like so. And then you normally work from there. So, we are going to have a very thin tail here, just because there was the mats in it. It would not have been fair to put little Miss Bramble through, cutting them all out. In fact, I don't think they would have cut out because a lot of them were like right against the base of the tail. So I'm just trying to neaten it up at the moment. So you brush the hair against the tail. No, no, darling, I know, Bobby. They don't like this bit. So that it's all kind of fanned out. Good girl. And then you're just cutting the bits that are sticking out so you can see there. Good girl. Again, I'm aware that she has, she can hear something. She's sort of brightened up. And no sausage, I know. They've got such a strong tail when they're pulling away from you. You know, their, their tail muscles are extremely strong. Watson does exactly the same thing, doesn't he? Hmm? He does exactly the same thing as you, because he doesn't want his tail cut either. And everything you can to get away from it, aren't you? You've just gone round in a circle. We're nearly done then. We're nearly done. The front of the leg, you need to make sure that you don't get the little dew claw. And there's also a pad at the back, so you need to be very careful about that. I'm just going to take the clippers and go down. You can do the, the legs a bit longer. I'm just holding my thumb on that pad and against the Dew claw so that we don't get it. Good girl, good girl. And then I'm going to use the brush, and just brush up. And to scissor the legs, you're just constantly brushing up, and you can use a spray. I've got a spray here that I sometimes use. Get a little spritz, and that just sort of holds the hairs up for you. And then you just start snipping. Okay, so brush up and then get yourself a little line that you're following. So just, you know, cut anywhere in the hair and then follow a line up and down. And my biggest recommendation when cutting is look from every angle to make sure that you've got everything you need. So let's do the front. So what I mean by a line is you could cut in here and then that's the start of your line. Follow that line down. And that should make yourself a little line to follow. But you just keep on either brushing up or pushing up with your hands. And that's how the lips do. So let's do your little pauses. Let's do your little pauses. So this is me doing the paw pad, so I'm just going to Scoop off a little of the excess. She's really pulling against me, so you have to hold really, really tight because otherwise, if they manage to pull away, then it will be more difficult going forward. And just cut some off to get that shape of the foot. Want that nice indent into the in the pull. Good girl. If they keep on moving their feet, what you can do is hold one foot. So I can hold that foot and then work on this one. And she can't move this one. That was a dog going past the front window. <laughs> Try not to use too much of the spray because obviously 
it's quite strong smelling as all doggy products are but you know that's going to bother the dog's airways so I try not to use that too much at all. I'm just holding a pour up here to get the lines straight. Good girl. Good girl. now let's hold this one up so I can get inside here so that's that foot done so you can see one next to the other and that one done and that one not cute you're cute aren't you you're getting tired pop it I'm tired girl I really want to get rid of some of this fluff but <coughs> you didn't like the hoover did you I'm a bit scared of that hoover so I think we'll not bother we'll just try and do it quickly big old mat isn't it that's not a nice one I know I know <laughs> you just had a big old sigh didn't you hmm not too bad. 